in order to understand linked list we need to understand some fundamentals of arrays okay we might have heard that an array is of fixed size and an array is stored in contiguous memory locations right so what do we mean by that now this right here right i have drawn let's say this is your mem this is how your memory looks where every block of memory is 4 bytes right this is 100 and this is 104 and so on every block is 4 bytes and let's assume that an integer requires 4 bytes in a typical example okay and whatever i have marked in red let's assume that that particular block of memory is taken right it's not free it's not available okay maybe some other integer or something has taken this space okay now let's say i have declared this array of integers whose size is 2 now an array needs continuous right the blocks have to be continuous only then i can store the uh, array there okay so i need two blocks so let's say i take this block and i take this block right these two blocks are available so i could take it let's say at some later stage in your program for some reason you want to increase the size of the array to 3 3 elements okay now if you want to increase the size to 3 elements that means we need three contiguous blocks there are two here and the third one is taken that means i can't just extend the size of this right so that means i'll have to move it somewhere else all the way somewhere else so let's say these three blocks i have to move the entire thing here now this is not an easy task right this is tedious like this is a costly operation to do every time let's say for some reason you decide that okay i don't want to do this tedious task let me just take a lot of memory let's say you want to simply take 1000 elements okay you are like saying i need 1000 blocks of memory let me store it in advance so that i don't have to do this costly operation later but what will this do this will basically store 1000 blocks for you right it's going to mark 1000 blocks is taken that means it cannot be taken by anything else so you are basically wasting memory if you don't really need 1000 elements what are you going to do you are simply wasting memory right you are simply taking it up so this is like a drawback of array and this is the reason why we need linked list what is the advantage of using a linked list in case of a linked list right you are we say like how we say uh, integer right in uh, case of arrays we say we have a node in a linked list we have one node in linked list okay so in order to store nodes in linked list you don't need the blocks don't need to be contiguous they can be anywhere wherever there is free space so let's say i want to declare one node so i have i'll take this particular block of memory the second one let's say it's here okay the third one is here these are the three blocks i want to use now in case of arrays if i want to access some element let's say i want to access the third element in case of arrays we only know the address of the starting element okay so we know that this the first a uh, particular element is present at the address 112 okay if i want to access the third element i simply have to add some offset to this address that means plus 4 bytes plus 4 bytes will lead me to 120 and this is the third element right so that means just using the first um, address of the first element i can know what is the address of other elements but in case of linked list what is the problem since the node can be anywhere in your memory wherever it is free how will you know where is the second node where is the third node i can't simply add some off offset to the first node right so that is for that that means somehow we have to know the address of the second and third element okay you might have heard of the word head in case of linked list a head basically stores the address of the first node okay so here what is the address of head sorry address head is storing 100 because the first your first node is present at the address 100 this is 100 right Okay, so head knows where your first node is, but head doesn't know where your second node is. That means somehow the first node should know where the second node is. So in case of linked list, right, one block is allocated for whatever data you want to store. In the second block, you have to specify where is your second node. Where is your second node? It's at the address hundred and sixteen, right? So that means your second block will store hundred and sixteen. Now this is one node. so one node has two blocks one for data and another one for storing the address of the second node similarly what will your second node do it doesn't know where the third node is so in the second block it will store the address of the third node which is 128 so this is the second node here okay 
Similarly, your third node will store the address of the fourth node, but there is no fourth node, that means it will simply store null here, not pointing to any address. Okay. So what is the drawback that you see as, um, so far what is the drawback that you see? The drawback is this, in case of linked list, you are needing extra space to store the address of this next node, right? That means you need two blocks of memory instead of one in case of arrays. So this is a disadvantage of linked list over arrays. But what are the other disadvantage? How do we compare the both and decide what we want to use? We just saw in order to access an element, if you know the address of the first node, we can get like if I say a of three, what is the third uh, third element of sorry let's say a of two. So what is the third element of the array if I simply want to just look at this? It's O of 1, that means constant time operation because if you know the first address of the first node, you can simply add the offset to get the third node, right? I mean, sorry, the third element. But in case of linked list, I can't simply say what is my third node because I only know the address of my first node. The first node contains the address of the second node and the second node contains the address of the third node. That means I will have to traverse my linked list to reach that node, right? because it's not continuous. So that is the drawback of linked list that if you want to access an element, the time complexity for that is O of n because if you if I want to access the last element, I have to go all the way, all the way to the last element, right? Because in the beginning, I don't know the address of the last element, last node. Okay. Now what are the other operations that we can compare it on? Uh, let's say insert, all right? You want to insert an element in case of arrays. If I want to insert an element at the beginning of the array, I'll have to shift all the other elements, right? Because it has to be contiguous and this is the starting element. So let's say here I store the new element. I'll have to move this to this and so on, right? I'll have to move these elements. So what is the time complexity of insert in case of arrays if I'm inserting at the beginning? It's O of n. It's O of n, right? Because you had to move n elements. Whereas in case of linked list, it doesn't matter, right? Where my first element is because it doesn't have to be contiguous. Let's say uh, somewhere here. I'm declaring a new node at position 140, right? So that means at address 140, I have my first node. I want I wanted to insert at the beginning. This is my first node. What will the second block store? It should store the address of the previous first node, which was what? 100. So this will simply store 100. That means the first node is now pointing to, this is now pointing to this one, right? This block. It's pointing to this block right here. So now this has become the first element. We didn't have to touch all the other elements. They can be wherever they were. That means insertion in case of linked list is easier compared to your arrays. And also one more thing we will have to do is we will have to make head point to the first node because head has to store the address of the first node. Okay. So similarly in case of deletion also is the same thing. If I want to delete the first element, I'll have to move all the other elements of the array to the left, right? So that is also O of N. Similarly, if I want to delete a node in linked list, let's say I want to delete this particular node. The first node, instead of storing the address of the second node, it can store the address of the third node, which is 128. So I can simply store 128 here, right? So now this is pointing to this and I'll make this node null so that it's free and it can be used by some other program. Okay. So that means insertion and deletion is easier in case of linked list compared to arrays, whereas accessing an element is easier in case of arrays compared to linked list. Now we'll see how we can declare a linked list. When we have to declare an array, what do we do? We simply do int a of 4. What does this specify? The size of the array. What does this specify? What is the data type of each element in the array, right? In case of a linked list example, if I want to say what is every element or what is every node, it has two data types, right? It doesn't have one data type. The first one is what? It can be anything. Let's say we want to store integer. So it's int. And the second data type is storing what? An address of another node. What is that data type that is used to store address? It's a pointer, right? That means in my every node, the first data type is an integer and the second data type is a pointer. So in order to combine these two, that means I need to give a data type, a user defined data type, 
because I don't have a data type for these together so I need to define my own so in order to do that in case of C and C++ we can use struct struct can be used to define your own data types struct right uh, and the next one is the name what is what what da what name do you want to give to your data type let's say we want to give the name node because node right this is a node so let's give a meaningful name node okay what is the first block or what is the first element you want to store inside your struct node it's an integer so let's say int data and what is the second value that you want to store it's a pointer that means let me name it next the star is used to specify that it's a pointer now we need to write the data type right just like how we wrote int for data what is the data type for this next what what address is this next storing what is the address the next is storing the address of another node right this is a node that means the data type for this should be a node what node the node that we just declared so struct node right so basically our every node stores an integer right the first one is integer that is where we want to store our data and the second one is a pointer to the next node so pointer to the next node right i'm saying node that means it stores the address of a node that's why its data type here will be struct node the star is used to specify that it's a pointer and this is the name of your pointer 